This is algebra lesson 3-1, solving two-step equations. The solution of an equation is the value or the values of the variable that makes the equation true, which means in order to determine if something is a solution, you're going to plug the value into the missing variable and see if it makes a true equation or not. An equivalent equation are equations that have the same solution or solutions. For example, if you had 3x equals 6, that's the same thing as saying 3x plus 2 equals 8. Because those are equivalent equations because eventually you would find that x equals 2. An inverse operation is an operation that undoes one another. For example, the inverse operation to addition is subtraction. The inverse operation to subtraction is addition. The inverse operation of division is multiplication, and the inverse operation of multiplication is division. Now, in order to solve two-step equations, we actually have to go back at one-step equations for just a moment or two. When you solve an equation, it is absolutely imperative that you solve it vertically, going down the page versus going across the page. Going across the page is messy, very complicated, and will get really hard to find where, where you're at once you get into multi-step equations, which is the next lesson. So learn to do this the right way the first time, and you'll be much happier. Every equation is like a teeter-totter. It has a balance point in the middle. Your equal sign is the division line between one side of the equation and the other side of the equation. Right now, my equation is balanced because x minus 3 equals 7. Both sides of my equation are balanced. If I was to do anything to one side of the equation, in order to keep that equation balanced, I must do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation. It's like being on a teeter-totter. If you have two people of equal weight on the teeter-totter, they can balance each other out. If you throw a person on the one side of the teeter-totter and don't put a person of equal weight on the other side, one person's going to be hanging up in the air while two people are on the ground. You don't want that. Same thing happens with an equation. In order to solve this equation, you'll notice that we want to get the variable x all by itself. x is a variable that likes to be a loner. He doesn't like to be with anything else. So we must undo what was ever done to x. x was subtracted, but 3 was subtracted from x. So we need to add 3 to both sides of the equation. And you must show it on both sides of the equation. Don't just show it on one side of the equation, or actually your equation is still unbalanced. Whatever you do to one side of the equation right here, you do to the other side of the equation right there. Now we can simply just do a matter of solving the equation. Negative 3 and positive 3 cancels each other out, leaving us with x. And 7 plus 3 is 10, so our equation is our solution is x equals 10. We can check this by simply placing 10 every time we see an x. So 10 minus 3, does that equal 7? And yes, 7 does equal 7, so it checks. Equation number 2, to isolate the variable, you'll notice that they multiplied it by 5 sixths. In order to undo multiplication by 5 sixths, we need to divide by 5 sixths. Or, Division, if you remember, is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal here. The reciprocal of 5 sixths is 6 fifths. So we're going to take each side of the equation and we're going to multiply it by 6 fifths. We can make this negative 9 a whole number by or a fraction by making it over 1 and multiply it by 6 fifths. Over here on the left hand side, the 5s cancel out and 6s cancel out, leaving me with x all by itself the way it likes to be. Here, multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Negative 9 times 6 is negative 54. 5 times 1 is 5. And you can leave it as an improper fraction. Because to go check it, it's going to be, have to be put back into an improper fraction to make sure that it is correct. If you wanted to check it, we'll check this. Negative 54 fifths multiplied by 5 sixths is supposed to equal negative 9. If we look at this, the 5s cancel out. 6 goes into 54 9 times, so you get negative 9 equals negative 9, and it does indeed check. This last example, you can see that we have negative 96 equals 4c. What was done to c? c was multiplied by 4, so we must divide by 4. Now, we're not going to write down divide by 4 this way, because that's not algebraic. We like algebraic ways. And fraction bar is the same way as saying division. So if I'm going to divide this side by 4, I must divide this side by 4. These two 4s cancel out. And negative 96 divided by 4 is negative 24. You can use your calculator on that. So C is going to equal negative 24. And again,
hand you could check. If you took negative 24 and multiplied it by 4, does it equal 96? 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9, yep, 96 equals negative 96, it does indeed check. Now, when we get into two-step equations, in solving an equation, you must isolate the variable. Still the same process. You still want to get that variable all by itself. To isolate the variable in a two-step equation, you reverse the order of operations. Normally, we multiply and divide before we add or subtract. But when you're solving an equation, you're undoing things, and you undo that, you do it in the reverse. It's just like when you first get dressed in the morning, hopefully you put your pants on before you put your shoes on. If you put your shoes on first and then try to put your pants on, it's going to be hard. But when you get undressed at night, you take your shoes off first and then you take your pants off. So it's the same process. You have to undo it in the reverse order that you did it. So here we need to undo addition or subtraction first, always. If you don't, you're going to end up with some really ugly fractions. Then you undo addition, and, uh, excuse me, multiplication and division. So we look at our first example here. 10 equals m over 4 plus 2. So undo addition and subtraction. We need to get rid of the 2 first. So we'll subtract 2 from this side, subtract 2 from this side. These two 2's cancel. 10 minus 2 is 8 equals m over 4. Now it's simply a one-step equation all over again. So to solve for m, we'll multiply both sides by 4. This will cancel with this, leaving me with m. And 8 times 4 is 32. And again, you could check all of these solutions to see if you are correct. I would highly suggest you check them on a quiz or a test. In your homework, you're not required to check them, but it would be a good idea to check them once in a while, especially if you're not sure. If we check this one, 32 divided by 4 is 8, so we have 10 equals 8 plus 2. That does indeed check because 10 does equal 10, so that is correct. Equation number 2, we'll notice that 7 equals 2 times y minus 3. So we need to undo the addition and subtraction first. So since they subtracted a 3, we will add a 3. These two 3's cancel out. 7 plus 3 is 10 equals 2y. To get y by itself, we need to divide by 2. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2. So we have 5 equals y. Always do your equations vertically, step by step by step, down the page. Do not do them horizontally. The book shows them horizontally. No mathematician I've ever seen likes them horizontally, so learn to do them vertically. Let's do another one. Let's say we have negative x plus 15 equals 12. Well, we need to get x by itself. So the first thing we need to do is undo the addition of 15. So we will subtract 15. So if we subtract 15, notice we still have negative x, so we'll keep the negative x there. Equals 12 minus 15 is negative 3. Notice we solve for negative x, or the opposite of x. We don't want to know what the opposite of x is, we want to know what x is. So to get x by itself, we need to divide by negative 1, or multiply by negative 1. This way we will get a positive x, because negative 1x divided by negative 1 is positive x, and negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. So solving two-step equations, you absolutely must undo addition and subtraction first, multiplication and division second. Now let's take a look at a word problem. A music store sells a guitar, a used guitar, for $120. This is $25 more than half the cost of a new guitar. What is the cost of a new guitar? Now I know several of these problems. You could probably solve without having to define a variable and write an equation. But the whole process is you're supposed to define a variable and write an equation. If you can do it with the easy ones, it will make the harder ones much, much easier to deal with. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to define a variable. You define your variable based upon what you are looking for. And I am looking for the cost of a new guitar. So I'm going to let my variable, I'm going to let C equal the cost of a new guitar. Now, according to this, the question says they sell a used guitar for $120. This is, this phrase, this is, is referring back to the used guitar. So the used guitar is $25 more than half the cost of a new guitar. So we're going to write that down. Used guitar is 
$25 more than half a used guitar. From that, I can simply write an equation. What is the cost of a used guitar? The used guitar is $120. So the used guitar is $120. Is means equal. 25 more than half. More than means whatever comes after actually comes first. So half a used guitar, used guitar with C, plus $25. $25 more than half a used guitar. So our equation is 120 equals 1 half C plus 25. So now we have a two-step equation and we're going to solve it. First thing we're going to do is get rid of any addition or subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 25. So 120 equals 25 plus 1 half X. And if we subtract 25 from 120, we will get 95. So 95 equals 1 half C. To get C by itself, we need to get rid of it. Multiplication by one half, so the reverse of that is dividing by one half, or multiplying by two. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by two, these twos will cancel, these ones will cancel out, with C equals 95 times two is $190. Since this is a word problem, it must be written in a complete sentence. All word problems are always written in a complete sentence. So the question was, what's the cost of a new guitar. So a new guitar costs $190. And there we go. There's our new guitar. Alright, last question. You ordered flowers from a catalog. Flowers cost 90 cents each. The shipping charge is $2.50. Let's hope it's not $250. If you have $18.50 to spend, how many flowers can you order? Okay, so again, first thing we should do is define our variable. And we're, we're trying to figure out how many flowers can we order. So I'm going to let x equal the number of flowers I can order. X is the number of flowers I order. I know that the cost of my flowers, cost of each flower, plus the cost of shipping, equals the total amount of money I have. of each flower plus the cost of the shipping equals the total amount of money I have. Each flower costs 90 cents. Okay. How many flowers am I going to buy? I don't know, but each flower is going to cost 90 cents times the number of flowers that I buy plus the cost of shipping. And if you remember, the cost of shipping is right here, $2.50. And you don't have to put the dollar sign in if you don't want to. And that has to equal the total cost that I have, the total amount of money I have to spend, which is $18.50. So the cost of each flower times the number of flowers, that's right here, plus my shipping, that's right there, equals the total amount of money that I have. So to make this a little simpler, let's take a look at this. So we have 0.90x plus 2.50 equals 18.50. First thing we need to do is undo addition and subtraction, so we'll subtract 2.50. So we'll get 0.90x. 18.50 minus 2.50 is $16. Take 16 and divide it by 0 0.90. And x will equal... Seventeen point seven. You might say, well, this is kind of weird. How come I'm getting a fraction or a decimal as an answer? Well, you can have $18.50 to spend. Can I buy 
0.7 repeating of a flower? Well, no. So the most flowers that I can buy is 17. Okay, since I can't buy part of a flower, I mean, I can't imagine I would tell them to send me the stem of one flower and all the flowers of the other ones. So since I can't buy uh, the part of a flower, simply then, then I can buy 17 flowers. And I'll have a little bit of change left over. As you can see, solving two-step equations is not all that 